Thanks for tuning in to another edition of another Dolphins podcast. The regular season is quickly approaching. Training camp is in the books. The preseason is winding down. Today we are breaking down the 53-man roster, our 3.0 edition, where we're going to focus on players we're fairly confident that are going to make the opening day 53-man roster for your 2024 Miami Dolphins. But before we get to that, I just want to give an apology and a thank you to everyone who's listened to the show on 560 WQAM. If you didn't notice, you probably did notice, last week's episode or our last episode had a bit of audio issues. Josh worked his voodoo magic, and while it sounded like his microphone was the one that was messed up, it was mine. So thank you, Joshua. Thank you for our listeners to bearing with us. And uh, all right, that's enough nonsense. Let's talk football Kat, it's great to have you back with us, joining me and Houts. I got to ask you, one of the things we recently spoke about on the show was that first moment, that first instinct, that football season is here for Josh and I was that first slap of cold air to the face. Have you had that moment yet? Does football feel back? It's, we're close, man. And gosh, how many how many days away is it the time we're, we're recording here? What, uh, 13 th- days? 13 days away. So, yeah, and... I'd say my my first moment of that was to was when Tua got out out on the field and went five for five. I mean, that's exactly what we wanted to see. And then more, what I wanted to see was him getting pulled from the game. So that's, <laughs> I mean, I'm glad he's not playing in this third one. So, so I was gonna say we of, agree that was we agree that was it, right? That was the end of the Tua Tagovailoa preseason. That's it. That's it. He was perfect. Five for five. Get him out of there. Everything we needed to see. So for the last. What, what I think this might have changed last year. Uh, it's It happened recently. So it used to be a process when you'd cut down the roster from 90 players down to 53. You'd have weekly and go down to like 75 and you'd have different milestones. Now the Dolphins have just until Tuesday, August 27th to trim the roster from 90 players down to 53. So our fun exercise today, we've done two previous 53-man rosters. This is really going to be defining about or about defining that core of the defense. So before we get into it, you guys, how many players did you feel fairly confident are going to make the 53-man roster? I got to 40. 40? Um, very confident. I, I had a lot. I had 47. Joshua, how? Yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I'm not fairly confident in any of this. I'd say I probably hit on about – Felt good about 45 of them, but I'm still sitting here as we speak trying to cut one player, trying to uh, toy with it in my head. So it was been a fun experience. I think this is probably the last one of these we're going to do, right? But, uh, yep, this is it. 3.0. Let's do it. A lot of wiggle room here because it's important to keep in mind there is a 16-player practice squad. They really loosen the rules for that practice squad so you could have some veteran players there. On top of that, the Dolphins will keep 53 players, only 46 They might have bumped that to 48. We'll suit up on game days. So there's some wiggle room here where the Dolphins are going to have some hard decisions where they're going to have to cut starting players. Maybe they'll go sign some starters from other teams. Gentlemen, let's jump right in. How many quarterbacks are guaranteed to make the 2024 Miami Dolphins? Uh, One, two, uh, and then you've got, you know, Mike White versus Skylar Thompson. And made no secret, I'm pulling for Mike White in this. I know the Dolphins can save $3.5 million by cutting him, but, you know, and it, it sounds like Skylar Thompson is, is right there with Mike, Mike White in this competition has been ahead of him a lot of the time, actually. But I just can't get over that. I, I feel like Mike White as a backup in this league has shown the ability to come off the bench and throw for a lot of yards. I know, I know everything in his Dolphins tenure when he's gotten the chance hasn't been pretty, but I still hold out that hope. So I've, I've got White over Skylar Thompson still. Yeah, and I'm letting my emotions swing me every other week. I think I said round one, I felt like it might have been Skylar Thompson in that QB2 battle. I felt like last week it was definitely Mike White. So now I sit here and I as well had Mike White making the 53. So I had two of Mike White, and then I did not keep three. In all the previous ones, I did keep three quarterbacks, but I sent Skylar Thompson to the practice squad, and he's that guy that I believe they can now activate, what, three quarterbacks on game day? So um, just hoping he doesn't get poached. But, I mean, based off what we've seen so far, I'm sorry, Skylar Thompson. I don't know if you're getting poached, man. I cannot stop thinking about Mike White going for four for 14 in that first preseason game. I can't stop thinking about him throwing that pick six against the Carolina Panthers. I don't know how we can talk about uh, a quarterback competition. Uh, I think Skylar Thompson, guys, might be a lock to make this roster. When you consider the fact you saved $900,000 if he's cut, I think this is someone that Mike McDaniel likes. I think if the Dolphins were going to try to go out and find another quarterback – 
you're not going to find anything good out there. So I think they're going to really invest in. We know this guy. We've seen these guys. They're big. They're nasty. Uh, but jokes aside, Skylar Thompson did start a playoff game. I think Mike White's fighting for his life here. I think that the Dolphins are either going to keep two or three, and, and that's going to come down to what White can do uh, in the final preseason game. But we will have to see about that. Running backs. I had three. What about you guys? Three oh, okay. guaranteed. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you fed. Now, this is what I think will happen, and I'm, that's what I'm basing this off of. I, I think there will be four. And I've got I've got Mostern, Achan, uh, Jalen Wright. And then, I mean, the real interesting decision if they keep four is Jeff Wilson or Chris Brooks. And mm-hmm. I, I have them keeping Jeff Wilson still and hoping they can sneak Chris Brooks through on the practice squad. I have my doubts about that. But – you know, Jeff Wilson just brings a bigger body. I mean, I know Chris Brooks is even bigger, but Jeff Jeff Wilson also brings uh, really great pass protection skills too. So I've got him as the fourth guy, and of course Alec Ingold is the fullback. So five, if you include Ingold. Yeah, I mean, I have all. I can understand where you're going out with Jeff Wilson. Again, he's one of Mike McDaniel's guys, right? I mean, so that's hard to overlook. But uh, I think I spoke into existence when we first did this, and I said that if a team comes calling, I would love to send Jeff Wilson packing. So, um, in this hypothetical world, I'm trading Jeff Wilson and keeping Chris Brooks on the roster, and then, uh, yeah, like you said, Alec Ingold. So I kept five. Um, again, I don't even know if the team would trade for Jeff Wilson, but he is a veteran. He does have experience. And let's be honest, the Dolphins needed a running back a few years ago, and who'd they call? The 49ers for Jeff Wilson. So, um, yeah, I appreciate what you've done, Jeff Wilson. Let me just say that. Wilson really fits the mold of a jack-of-all-trades that the Dolphins really like to have, specifically Mike McDaniel really likes to have. Um, the Miami Dolphins would save $1.2 million if he's not on the roster. And weirdly enough, I, I kind of look at the third preseason game. If Jeff Wilson goes off, maybe you trade him, and if he has kind of a – decent performance and no team's really knocking you you keep him on the roster and you do what cat said where you try and you cross your fingers and toes that you can kind of keep chris brooks on the practice squad i'm surprised cat you didn't bring up maybe a return of selvan ahmed in a couple weeks or anything like that yeah i don't think ahmed will play in the nfl again to be honest with you uh so we'll see i, I just don't think too it, far it, too far yeah i mean uh <laughs> Good luck to the guy. Isn't Patrick he, Laird he, still around? I mean, I, I like Patrick Laird, but isn't he still? Is he still at Tampa Bay? I can't uh, he remember. Was, he was bouncing around last year. I don't. I don't think I'm, he's on a roster. I love either. Patrick Laird. I, it sounds like I'm disrespecting these guys. I'm out. I'm... <laughs> he's a he's a free agent, Patrick Laird. Tight ends. I think you know this. This is probably one position where I feel kind of foolish that I was like maybe Julian Hill won't make the roster. In each of the last two drafts we did, or. Uh, 53 man rosters we've done I haven't had Julian Hill on this team and as you talk or you hear people around this team and you you know listen to different people Julian Hill's a badass is going to make this team and probably push to be the tight end that plays the most snaps just because of his sound blocking ability maybe catch a few passes be this team's true Anthony Fasano but uh guys this is a real race where you could see maybe Jody Fortson making a couple plays Tanner Connor making a couple plays a lot of a lot of questions still to be answered at tight end, I feel. Yeah, I mean, I I think the major question is it really comes down to are you going to keep are you going to try to keep Tanner Connor or and or Jer- Joey Fortson on the practice squad? That's to me what it comes down to. I, I see Jenu Smith, Durham Smythe, and and Julian Hill locked in as the top three guys. Yeah. But you know, then the question becomes, you know, you've got four you know former wide receivers and Tanner Connor and Joey Fortson are how much more given that they've been in the league for a couple of years are you willing to invest in them there in the practice squad I think when we first did this I was trying to fit Tanner Connor on there but I believe it was Jake that during the episode like kind of sold us on Julian Hill so I've kind of been on board with the Julian Hill train it sounds like you know he's wearing the orange jersey we see him bulldozing over guys um we can pass protect he can also is now you know impact in the passing game so um i'm intrigued to see by him i think it's just gonna be those three i think i stashed connor and maybe even forts and both i maybe stashed on the practice squad but i went you know full fantasy mode on that but yeah i think it's gonna be john New smith durham smith and julian hill and let's just be honest i think john New smith's gonna inject so much life into this offense i know everybody's talking about it i know we've talked about it from the beginning but what he's going to bring to this offense is unlike anything we've seen for years i mean charles clayton i don't even know if he brought this type of versatility and stuff like that and we all were hyped on charles clay back then so in each of the first two 53 man roster predictions we did i had us keeping six wide receivers 
But as we talk about it, and Kat, you mentioned it, both of these guys, Fordson and Connor, were former wide receivers. I currently, weirdly enough, and this is something we can debate and, and come back to, I have five wide receivers as, as locks right now, but would it someone like Jody Fortson or Tanner Connor? I, I feel like they move the needle more than a Braylon Sanders or like an Anthony Schwartz. Wouldn't you agree, especially when you consider like an Odell Beckham and, and potentially River Craycraft starting the season on the pup list? Well, I agree with you, except uh, everyone you mentioned there, I either have on PUP or getting cut. So <laughs> I also have five receivers. I mean, I've, I've got Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, Braxton Berrios, Eric Ezekama, and Malik Washington. Yep. And I've also I've got River Craycraft and Odell Beckham going to PUP. Now, those are two good veterans to have on PUP at, to come back after six weeks. You know, if you because the Dolphins obviously have a more than enough skill positions to keep going and to be dynamic on offense. But then around the middle of the season or after six games, you can activate one of them and kind of get a shot in the arm there, especially with Odell Beckham. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. For the sake of this argument, can we just all agree Odell Beckham Jr. is on the pup list then? Can we, can we all agree? Because I had him on there, and then I, t- I tweeted out something about Aaron Brewer, and uh, someone mentioned that Big O and his sources are – uh, I'm not Orlando Alzagari, right? Isn't that who it is? Orlando. Either way, Big O. He has sources, and I guess he thought that Aaron Brewer and Odell Beckham Jr. would start Week One. So I put him on my list. I kept six, but we're going to keep him on pup. So yeah, Malik Washington, Eric Ezukama, Braxton Barrios, Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill, and then we get River Craycraft back, hopefully, and Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, that would be quite the injection to that offense as well. Where does the hard argument? come in when you're activating a river craycraft or an odell beckham jr who who what is it going to be a fact that you have like a, a fortson or a connor make the 53 or are we going to have to talk about hey can we hope uh, we can drop malik washington to a practice squad are we going to have a hard uh, conversation about braxton barrios in the middle of the season i i don't think it'll be a hard conversation with beckham i mean you he's he's when he's healthy he's back if and if he is healthy enough to start the season i hope he is then he's on. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Craycraft, I think there's a little more, a little more wiggle room there. Where if who you, do you replace him with? Those is on the fifty three. Who, who do you take away to put up Beckham on when he gets back? Is what I'm trying to get at. Oh, gotcha. Um, I don't think you take anybody off from from wide receiver, tight end, or running back. Um, I I think you look at possibly the defensive side of the ball, maybe a cornerback if you're looking at, talking about a roster spot. Um, cause you know, why you're, you know, cause I, I you probably aren't going to release or get rid of or, or release Malik Washington if he has produced anything in the first few weeks, because he's, he's a rookie and you've invested a, a draft pick in him. Braxton Berrios is your punt return and Eric Azucama has the monstrous upside. So I don't think there's any room to cut any of those guys. So I think you have to look at other positions. That's that's all I was going to say. I was going to be a parakeet with that because I'm looking at my defensive side and there are guys that I'm keeping now because of, you know, different things. So, yeah, I'm keeping those uh, wide receivers because at that point you're hoping that Malik Washington has shown anything like we've seen in preseason. The hardest position to predict, whether it's because of injuries or just for the fact that we care more about the offensive line than Chris Greer does. Gentlemen, I have eight locked in offensive linemen, Cat, uh, how many do you have, and were there any hard decisions this early in the game? I have nine, and, you know, I'm not the biggest Lester Cotton fan, and I don't think he's he's a great fit in this offense either, but when you hear Mike McDaniel talk about him and you, you think about the Dolphins are obviously injured and thin, you know, at the center and guard position, uh, I, I think Cotton does end up making the team. So I do see, like you, I see eight locks, which are – um, you know, if, if we assume Isaiah Wynn is on PUP, um, you've got Armstead, Robert Jones, Aaron Brewer, uh, Liam Eichenberg, Austin Jackson. Those are your starting five. And then after that, you've got uh, Jack Driscoll, Patrick Paul, and uh, Kendall Lamb as your as your backups. And then your ninth guy is Lester Cotton, at least on my roster. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I have, except for Aaron Brewer. I wasn't sure if I was putting him on the pup list, but like I said, Big O's little reporter, whoever replied to me, that made it enough as Aaron Brewer being out there because he better be out there. This offense, we don't want to see Lee Meikenberg starting at center. We saw that the um, 
the Chiefs just gave Creed Humphrey a huge four-year extension, right? Is, is th- that happened earlier this week. So something that I thought was a uh, little interesting is that they started showing the graphics for the highest paid centers in the league. And Aaron Brewer is on that list. I think he's like the seventh or the highest paid center. That speaks more to the fact that every center on that list is likely going to be someone who's on a second contract more than it does about the fact that these guys are making millions of millions. But man, just like throughout this preseason and it kind of goes into like the Anthony Walker um, bucket that we'll probably get to where we haven't heard a lot about this and it's another Mike McDaniel like silent bomb. It kind of feels like someone he doesn't talk about and then it's all, they have this massive injury. How do you guys feel about where we stand with Aaron Brewer? Cause um, it's very early. He signed with this team three, four months ago. But it, I'm getting queasy already. To me, Aaron Brewer resembles what the Dolphins' offense is going to be in that you're going to have a lot of hits and a lot of misses. I mean, oh, I look, like this that. is one of the worst pass-protecting centers in the NFL last year. He's undersized, but you you get him on the move and allow him, and like Teron Armstead was saying the other day, you allow your offensive lineman to be a weapon, then mm-hmm. I think that he is one of the more explosive, dynamic centers in the league. So it's, it's hit and miss. I mean, I, I really think the Dolphins are kind of in that Mike Martz Rams uh, uh, mindset from like 20 years ago. Score four or five touchdowns a game, and that's – I don't care how we do it. I don't care how often we turn the ball over. I don't care how many penalties we have. That's how the, how the offensive um, side of the ball is looking. And just one other thing, too, because you mentioned Creed Humphrey. Uh, uh, Creed – Humphrey was taken yep. 10, 15 picks after <laughs> Liam Eikenberg. And, hey, I don't mean to crap on that draft because Greer's three picks before him were Jalen Waddell, Jalen Phillips, and Javon Holland. Those are all home runs. Imagine if they had drafted Creed Humphrey to pair with those top three. I mean, you'd be talking about just a legendary draft. Put his ball cap up in the ring of honor if he did that. Man, that's so painful. And now we're sitting here talking about Aaron Brewer. I mean, that's what uh, it's – I don't know that we can trust him. And I, we haven't seen him out there. And, Jake, I still go back to the Baldinger thing where he d- said you don't even know if he can play center if we have the center on the roster. So very queasy about that because the trickle-down effect is then, again, Liam Eikenberg at center, which I posted, what, 11 plays, and the dude was on the ground on the mat, you know, yeah, it was. It looked ugly, and that was just five plays. So, um, Jack Driscoll looks solid, I think, at times. You know, there's some versatility there, but good lord, man, you you signed Aaron Brewer. You watch Connor Williams going to you know greener pastures, and now we're sitting here wondering if the entire interior of the offensive line is going to implode. And the season starts in what two weeks? That's so Dolphins. Over under five and a half games, cat that Nancy Pelosi, aka Liam Eikenberg, starts at center. Um. I'll go under, um, but I, I'll definitely go over as far as how many games he starts, period, which isn't a good thing. I mean, look, I, I don't think I don't think Eichenberg starting anywhere is a good thing. I think he's a good backup. I think he's a good Michael Dieter, uh, but that's it. I mm-hmm. mean, it's um, – but that – look, that's one part of the – that was the deal, that the Dolphins are going to go out and, you know, sign a bunch of these players here, and, you know, they're going to go get uh, – Johnny Smith, and they're going to go get go sign, you know, Jordan Brooks and a few other players on the defensive side of the ball, and they're going to spend money. And at the guard position, we're just going to make it work. So hopefully, that doesn't come back come back to bite the Dolphins. I'm going over. I'm just going to be doom and gloom. I'll say he's going to start over because what's the le- last thing we want to see this season? Probably that. So over. Lester Cotton was the first name I didn't have bolded. Another names I wrote down, not that I was really sold on them. Andrew Meyer, Ryan Hayes, Kat, any any pulse there that you feel about them? Ryan Hayes, I, I don't think has looked too, too great. Andrew Meyer, he's the snap issues have really settled down, and I'm, I'm hoping Miami can find a backup center. I thought Sean Harlow was going to do that, but now he's on injured reserve after, I think, one game, and he went down. You know, it's not impossible that Andrew Meyer beats out Lester Khan for that final spot. Um, Ryan Hayes, I'd say, I can't see it very simply because – to me, he's a tackle. He's not a guard. Um, mm. You know, he's when he was drafted, he was he was mentioned as a guard, even though he played had thirty something starts at just left tackle for Michigan. But you know, when, when he got some looks at guard, it didn't look good, and I, I don't see the Dolphins rostering him as 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 a fifth offensive tackle when I don't feel like he has a whole heck of a lot of upside. But Meyer is somebody that you, I think I don't think he'll make it over Cotton, but I think he will make it back onto the practice squad. 
I admire on the practice squad, and I was just going to say, I think Hayes might have been the one that unintentionally hit Harlow, so I'm probably cutting him just for that and because we haven't really seen much out of him. The Dolphins are in a unique spot, and I'm really impressed with what they've done with the salary cap. The Dolphins have about $21 million in salary cap space, and it's they're in a really cool crossroad in the sense of if a player goes on the market that they feel that can impact the team, they can go make a deal for them. But at the same time, they could roll that money over when you look at next year. They're already $30 million over that cap. I thought it was really interesting that um, Aaron Wilson, reporter down in Houston, he noted that the Dolphins were interested in Matthew Judon, which... I, I loved that. I loved hearing that. Obviously, Chris Greer is not going to be able to sign everyone, but just the fact that maybe the Dolphins didn't have the third-round pick and that was the difference maker in that deal. The best ability is availability for Chris Greer and the available cap space. Gentlemen, do we feel that the Miami Dolphins are going to need to make some sort of addition to this offensive line, really push in some of that cap space, or do you think that they're still in a scenario where they can shop, they can browse, but in reality, it's best to save that money when you look ahead to 2025? Yeah, I, I think the time for trading has has come and gone. I mean, there was a there was some talk about James Daniels, who I think would fit really well in this offense, actually, uh, because his ability to move so well. But it, you know, it looks like looks like the Steelers are going to hang on to him, and they've had a couple injuries to the interior of that offensive line. So I don't see them them trading for anyone. Um, you know, Jackson Carmen from the Bengals is somebody who might shake loose. Um, you know, a, a guard tackle, a former second round pick. He's, when given the opportunity, he's played decent at offensive tackle, but when moved into guard or given a chance at guard, he struggled. So I don't know if that's a great fit. Uh, could he possibly be a big body that gets in at left guard, kicks Robert Jones to right guard, um, and tries to take on that Isaiah win role? Um, I could possibly see that. So. We'll we'll definitely keep a close eye on on those offensive linemen who might who might get cut loose here after after August twenty seventh. Yeah, I, th- I think we've been expecting it for weeks and weeks, and it's never come. So I think at this point we're just hoping to poach a player that you know another team overlooks because they have so many different offensive line pieces, like Cat mentioned. So um, no stone will be left unturned. But as we know, we're all sitting here hoping for offensive line, and uh, you know they'll probably sign a wide receiver or something like that, which <laughs> I, I guess isn't so bad. We'll run out and pick them up in dynasty leagues and such. But um, we want that interior offensive line, right? We need we need to sure up that offensive line because as we saw last year, what was it, thirteen or? Uh, more different rotations. I mean, the, the game of musical chairs needs to end, and it's not looking so great right now. I think the coolest thing about this project we've been doing, I think we did our first 53-man roster projection back in June, and Cat came rolling in, no problems, fully confident, when he said, yeah, the Dolphins are going to sign Calias Campbell. I'm just going to put him on my first 53-man roster. It was so great to see him sign like four five weeks later and you just hit that out of the park so guys i think there are four locks on the defensive line to make the roster but cat how are you feeling about this group right i've got five locks um you know you've got Clayus campbell you've got zach sealer benito jones i i didn't put benito jones on the pop list it, it, it sounds like he's going to be able to suit up for week one we'll see and then um you know neville gallimore i can't get over i've seen people project him to be cut but he's guaranteed his entire salary. So I, mm-hmm. I don't quite see why you'd do that. You're going to pay him the same amount whether he's here or he's not here. You'd really have to be over and above convinced that he's not one of the best 53 players on the roster, and I don't see how he can get there. Um, so to me, he's a lock as well. And then Brandon Peely, I've got to think, is a lock as well. I mean, he's the big body. He's he's the guy that can step in and nose tackle. And I think he was a big reason why T.R. Tart uh, was let go too. So – I don't see – there was some time where I thought maybe um, um, uh, Payne could have unseated him as the backup nose tackle. That definitely hasn't happened. So I think he's safely on the roster. So I've got five making it. Uh, Deshaun Hand I've also got as a six guy. And going with strength and numbers, I actually switched it up a little bit and, and put Jonathan Harris as the seventh. Yeah, I think the only place we're different, I think I did get rid of Jonathan Harris. So I have Zach Sealer, Calais Campbell, Neville Gallimore, Benito Jones, Deshaun Hand, Brandon Peely. Is that right? And then you just had Jonathan Harris, correct? So, uh, yeah, we're pretty good there. I just I just still can't believe you called your shot Babe Ruth style. And then they went out there, signed him, and we're already seeing what type of leader he is. He's already just – it's crazy, man. 
I had four with Gallimore, Sealer, Jones, and Campbell. Uh, Kat, I'm not going to lie. I saw your tweet about Gallimore and the, the contract. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just throw him in there. That makes a lot of sense. I'm so happy you both said Peely because that was someone that I, I had there. I'm like... Am I, am I being too much of a homer here? Is that one of those guys that I just have been, you know, had a bias for this whole time? But man, it just seems like every preseason game he's out there making plays. He feels like one of those guys that can feed off of having players like Sealer and Campbell around him. So I definitely think he could uh, find a spot. This is where it gets a little awkward. So we're just going to call it edge players. And guys... I'm just going to kind of jump out in front of this. I have three, and I don't know if that was me being too strict, but am I just flat out dumb for just already not saying Mo Kamara, a fifth round pick, as a guaranteed roster spot? Um, I'd be shocked if Mo Kamara got, was cut. I mean, it's, it's hard for a fifth round draft choice to get cut. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, it, it doesn't sound like he's been lighting the world on fire in training camp. He did have the sack last week. I think he does get the benefit of the doubt, but I don't think it's impossible that he gets the ax. Um, and if the Dolphins are committed to keeping four edge players, then, you know, are you going to keep him over Quentin Bell? Uh, I've got both of them making it there. So I've got Jalen Phillips, <coughs> uh, Ch uh, Chop Robinson, Mo Camara, Quentin Bell, and Emmanuel Ogba um, yeah. as, as my five guys. Yeah, I have the exact same thing I had. Yeah, that's exactly what I had. Can't even sugarcoat it. I can't make it sound good. I'm just glad Jalen Phillips is back, and um, at some point we're getting Bradley Chubb back to this unit. So excited to see what Chop Robinson does. I think we're going to release this before the preseason game. Excited to see what he does tonight because he did look pretty good. He showed some good and bad last week. Excited for what he can bring to this. Josh, how about this then? Uh, there's two guys on Pups, mentioned Chubb. Uh, Cameron Good is another guy that can come back. Who would be the first one out of that group? Shit. I mean, I, I haven't seen Bell personally, so I haven't, like, I haven't gotten to, like, see it up close and personal, so it's just a myth to me. I really haven't – I guess I'd go with Bell or maybe even Agba. I mean – I don't even want to speak into an existence, but we're talking about all these guys you have to bring back. And with the Dolphins, right? We're going to have guys coming and going. It's football coming and going all the time. But I guess I guess if I had to pick one, I'll go with Quentin Bell just because Emmanuel Agba, I owe you some respect for everything you've done for the Dolphins. Kat, what do you think? Yeah, I'd go with Bell too. Um, see, Agba I thought was terrible last year. And yeah. I, I think he's been bad for a year and a half. Now injuries have played a part in that. And – uh, throughout training camp, it, it word is that he 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 looks he looks like a refreshed guy now. Um, you know, kind of looks more like he's rounding back into form from two years ago. But does that happen very often for a player who's entering his ninth season? Not usually. So, <clears throat> you know, Agba would fill a huge need. You know, until Bradley Chubb comes back. Hope he plays well. I'll be skeptical until then. Agba, it's so hard not to <coughs> walk that. It's so hard not to walk the Homer line of. Uh, well, it's a new system. Well, Fangio just played his system and wanted to use his guys, and Anthony Weaver is going to play to their strengths. Like, it's so easy to have that concept or that idea grow with someone like Emmanuel Agba. I completely agree with you guys. I think Quentin Bell is that first guy out just because if Kamara, who I'm glad we do this because, you know, I, I do think he'll make the roster. Um, at that point, when you're bringing back, like, someone like Bradley Chubb, do you want someone who's going to grow and get better, or are you going to lean on a guy who's been here for four or five years? When you already have Agba in the building and Phillips and Chubb, I think you kind of lean into the going with that youth movement. Inside linebacker, Josh, we are breaking hearts here. Is Channing Tindall making it for you? I had to start with you for this one. I have him making it, and I think a lot of it comes down to this third game. I think we kept going back and forth with him and Duke Riley. I'm actually looking over my roster, and I'm still torn between whether I want to get rid of a safety later or Duke Riley. And I'm sorry, Duke Riley. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of you now. So I got Jordan Brooks, David Long, and, yes, I think Channing Tindall makes it. Is Anthony Walker on the pup list for you guys? That's the biggest thing. I, I mean, okay, yeah, I thought that was pretty a sure thing. So I guess as sad as – what were you going to say, Kat? Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say I there, – There's there are a few players on this – roster that are borderline about PUP. I put him on the PUP just to simplify things. He hasn't been here in three weeks. And, you know, you look at Duke Riley and uh, Channing Tindall and Curtis Bolton's played well too. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's not as imperative he gets back in the first six weeks. So I, I put him on the PUP list. I think 
Curtis Bolton's a name that, just because of the way the dominoes have fallen, has a really good shot to make a name for himself, be a special teams guy, and really develop into one of those linebackers. I mean, Cam Brown came over from the Giants, and it's been upsetting. It's disappointing to see that he got injured as well, but the Dolphins need that special team or inside linebacker type. I think uh, Bolton, someone who led the team in tackles in the first week of the preseason, could end up being that guy. Cap... We haven't done a lot of these during the preseason, but what have you seen at a Channing Tindall? Where's your confidence level with someone like him who's trying to really make a name for himself in a new defense? You know, I think Josh uh, is exactly right. This There aren't a lot of opinions that can be changed here in this third preseason game, but you know, I really do want to see who, who wins out in that three, third preseason game between Curtis Bolton and Channing Tindall. Because, I mean, if you take – where they were drafted out of the equation, <clears throat> you take the physical skills out of the equation. I think Bolton has played better than Tyndall in these first two games here. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, you had Tyndall had a, had the had the sack uh, or sack and a half, but that first sack that he had, I mean, it was just a straight beeline to the quarterback. I mean, nobody blocked him. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm really looking for, forward to seeing here in the third game. I'm just a sicko. Once I say that I like a guy, I try to you know, <laughs> ride or ride or die with that guy right going on to cornerbacks um i think sadly we're gonna say that cam smith starts the season on pop and part of the reason the dolphins might feel comfortable doing that is they've had a lot of strong performances from some of the younger guys some of the undrafted rookies so guys i honestly see for entering the third preseason game i see four guys that are locks And I see a bunch of guys who have the entire world in their hands and can go out and make a play and secure their spot. Yeah, there are. So I've got with Cam Smith on the PUP, I've got five locks here. I've got Jalen Ramsey, Kendall Fuller, Cater Kohu, Saran Neal and Ethan Bonner. Those are the those are the five there. And then. From there, I think one of three undrafted free agents will make the roster, and that's either Storm Duck, Isaiah Johnson, or Jason Matry. And for the two that don't make it, I am those are the top two guys I'm hoping get on the practice squad, and then nobody touches. So I do have Storm Duck being that sixth defensive back. Yeah, I actually I bought into the Isaiah Johnson hype, so I actually have – Isaiah Johnson making the roster. So I have Jalen Ramsey, Kendall Fuller, Cater, Kohu. Uh, you guys mentioned Cam Smith on Pup, Saran Neal, Storm Duck, and Ethan Bonner, and then Isaiah Johnson. So let's ride. It'll be interesting to see what the Dolphins decide to do here. Um, Barry Jackson's kind of said this quite a bit, that Isaiah Johnson and Storm Duck are different types of cornerbacks. So will the Miami Dolphins go with someone who's a little uh, taller, a little more physical like Johnson, or go with a, a speedy, fierce duck like Storm? So that'll be interesting to see. Storm's been someone I've enjoyed watching all preseason and that that's probably one of the greatest things about watching the preseason the cornerback wide receiver battles are pretty easy to decide did he catch it did he not did he throw it out of bounds things like that the final well special teams that that one's easy enough but the final position group that we have to talk about is the safety position javon holland jordan poyer those are your starting two safeties cat if i remember correctly there was a point where you felt that marcus may was on that bubble fighting for a spot have you seen enough where he's going to land on that opening day roster? You know, this this is probably the toughest one for me, the safety spot, because you've got out of uh, Elijah Campbell, uh, Patrick McMorris, Marcus May, and Nick Needham, you're going to have t- either two or three players make it, probably two. And I do have four safeties, and I went with Elijah Campbell and McMorris. And so – both Marcus May and Nick Needham get the axe in this situation here. Uh, May would be May would be a tough one. I mean, uh, to to because <clears throat> I go back and forth. Is this a really good veteran to have as your third safety? Maybe somebody who can give you some three safety looks, or is this somebody who's just not very good anymore at this point in his career? And I don't think he's shown quite enough. One thing that I was talking to a friend about too is like. Is it a hundred percent locked in stone that Jordan Poyer is on this team? Like, I, I mean, I think I think so, but I mean, you kind of think one one year, two million dollars, only one million of it guaranteed, and he hasn't played that much. If they haven't been all that impressed physically with what they've seen, 
Is it impossible they go with Marcus May as their starter or Elijah Campbell with the starter? I, I don't know. Just throwing out some some theories there. I like your craziness. There's, I, I love it. That's at uh, we love to do the always. Sunday. That's Charlie jumping out the back. Wow, boy, right? Like that's, uh, I love that. I, I do have Marcus May making the roster. I think I should have probably leaned Elijah Campbell for his familiarity, you know, with the team and the coaching staff. But I had a Javon Holland, Jordan Poyer, which now you know you're starting to get me to question things. Uh, Patrick Morris and Marcus May. So those were my four. I realize now going through the corners and safeties, I did have to say goodbye to Nick Needham, which previous pods I've said, you know, you never count him out, but. I think I'd rather see what Patrick Morris and some of these other guys can now bring to this defense. You know, time, time to move on, unfortunately. I hope they can play the numbers game and get to five guys. I, I really like having Holland, Poyer, Campbell, May, and Nick Morris. Is there a world where after having 100 tackles last year, Jordan Poyer's energy got sapped by the Monstars, somebody who's been in the league for about a decade? Like, I can't. That wouldn't be the most crazy thing. Now that you, like, I still can't get over the fact that he signed that $2 million credit contract don't get me wrong Justin Simmons is a lot younger um, he's looking for a new deal but his one-year deal with the Falcons was seven million dollars you do wonder why did Jordan Poyer sign so quickly and why did he sign for so cheap um, I just looked up Marcus May is making like 1.1 mil so I mean there's there's questions to be had there and, and this is going to be an interesting group I do wonder if you kind of keep someone like May just because you have you know Anthony Walker uh, on the pup list just somebody who can be a, a physical freak in the box and, and the tone setter. Maybe the Dolphins will lean into that earlier this season. We will have to see. Gentlemen, no debates. Jake Bailey, Jason Sanders, Blake Ferguson. I, I think that's pretty simple. Um, any surprises here, Josh? I, I love that you had the revelation right here. Like, oh, God, like Nick, Nick Needham's going to be cut. And that kind of speaks to the fact like there are going to be some tough decisions to be made. Kat, did anything really stick out to you while doing this? You know, this has been one of the easiest 53-man rosters to predict. I mean, it's there's not a lot of intrigue. I mean, as far as there, there's a, I mean, there are some one-on-one -on -one battles. I think at this point, you know, like mm -hmm. is Channing Tindall and, and Curtis Bolton, or that six defensive lineman, or uh, Jeff Wilson versus Chris Brooks, and and those are interesting things to watch out for. And of course, Mike White versus Skylar Thompson. But other than that, it's not. It's not a situation like, uh, I mean, even like 2019 where it was just the wild, wild west. Uh, right. Or even 2020 or 2021 where you had, you had all these interesting battles going on. You know, this is a more well-defined roster here. So it'll, it'll be more interesting for me to see who the Dolphins, if there are any surprises uh, for who gets cut and how, how many of these younger guys they can get back on the practice, back on the practice squad. Yeah, I think from a sicko's perspective, I mean, you love doing this type of roster stuff, right? You love looking at these late round guys. So it's probably not nearly as exciting, but it's nice to have, the, you know, some of those studs at the top of this that make this step chart a lot easier to do. I'm just uh, intrigued to see, like you mentioned, some of these hard cuts that are going to be made, some of these difficult decisions you didn't even throw out. We were just talking about cornerbacks. So for as, you know, not as exciting as it is, we can sit here and run down the different uh, battles that we're all intrigued by and, you know, what's going to sucker us into that game tonight uh, that, we, that we're going to sit there and watch the entire three hours for. Back in the day, the third preseason game, that was the one. You know, you have starters going into the third quarter. But that is it. That is all the time we have today on another Dolphins podcast. Josh and I will be back with some instant reaction after the game. With that being said, Kat, we'll cook up something for next week's show. We ha This is going to be the longest two-week stretch here before the Dolphins host the Jacksonville Jaguars. But we are here. Football season is back. I can't wait to go through the season with you guys, with our listeners. But that is it. Go enjoy your weekend. We will be back soon with a new episode. But until then, that's it. Fins up. Fins up.